It is the most beautiful thing in the world, but few people know that contracting AIDS is not the only life-threatening consequence of sexual activity. According to the World Health Organization, every year over half a million women worldwide contract cervical cancer, which spreads mainly through sexual intercourse. The cause is the so-called human papillomavirus, HPV for short, of which there are over 100 varieties. In some cases, when they penetrate the skin and mucous membranes and get into the body, they can cause the growth of malignant tumors, such as cervical cancer. How can women protect themselves from HPV? For many years, scientists were baffled. But this man has declared war on the virus and is well on his way to victory. Immunologist Ian Fraser. Finding a vaccine to prevent cervical cancer and save women's lives is a great testimony to the power of medical research to make a real difference in human life. We really are very fortunate to have vaccines and it's really nice to be part of a story where I've gone from thinking about it to discovering it to seeing it used on a global basis. In Brisbane in the 1980s, Fraser founded the world's first research group dedicated exclusively to HPV. But after the first attempt, the team suffered a setback. The search for the life-saving vaccine seemed impossible. Vaccines are normally made by growing the virus in the lab, and it simply wasn't possible to grow papillomavirus in the lab. We really didn't know what the best way to go forward from there would be. However, in 1990, fate led Fraser to the Chinese virologist Yan Su. The cloning expert was also busy investigating HPV. From that time forward, the team researched ways to defeat the virus. All of the processes we tried over the first year failed. And we, they, we didn't know why they were not working. All we know, knew was that we weren't getting what we were looking for and we would try again and again and again. And eventually, Jan and I almost got to the stage where we said, look, this is never going to work. But we decided to keep going because we thought the result was so important. So the failures became the driver for us keeping going for success. Fraser and his colleague eventually tested out a completely new approach. They cloned the surface proteins of HPV and attached them to another virus that only served as a carrier. With their disguised virus, they were able to actually trick the human immune system into making antibodies against HPV in response to the Trojan horse. It was extremely exciting to realize that we had a product that might actually help prevent cervical cancer. It was so unexpected and we could see what the future would bring. Since the vaccine was patented, over 125 million doses have already been administered in over 100 countries. It must be administered to healthy women and girls, ideally before they start to engage in sexual activity. Fraser is personally striving to make the drug available in both developed and developing countries in order to save the lives of even more women throughout the world. Just as the medication was gaining ground, fate again struck the team, when Fraser's friend and colleague Yan Su suddenly died. Fraser remains friends with his wife to this day. As an assistant to Su, she was a part of the research team from the very beginning. 20 years later, I'm walking on the very busy city center, and uh, the kids, you know, jumping and walking towards me, and my sister was beside of me. If there was no this vaccine, maybe the situation different. These kids may be not available, maybe my sister is not stay with me. That's, I'm thinking, so important. So life, it's a treasure. If we can save the life as a woman, I'm so, so happy. For their ingenious vaccine, Fraser and his late partner could soon be awarded one of the highest honors in science, 
the European Inventor Award in the category Non-European Countries. This year, the trophy will be presented for the tenth time in Paris. I'm delighted to be nominated for this award. It gives me a chance to tell the story about how Australia and the University of Queensland has contributed to the development of the vaccine, and also to tell the story of Jan Zhu and how his work was crucial to its development. It is the story of an ingenious invention, the story of thousands of lives saved, and it is the story of a friendship between two brilliant scientists.